So here I've got the drivetrain from a 2006 Forester XT installed in my Impreza. And I've got the, let me show you back here. I've got the rear differential installed. I've got the axles installed. And I've installed the drive shaft all the way up. And as you can see here we've got the transmission. So one of the first things that I noticed on this chassis is that here we have the wiring harness for the transmission. Now one of these is the reverse light switch and the other one is the neutral switch to tell the computer the car is in neutral. And so on the transmission I have the wiring harness and here that is. So this is the plug that came with uh, the transmission and on the other end it has two plugs that look relatively similar um, and these plug in back there on the transmission you can't see them hanging down it doesn't look like uh, there's one of them hanging down and so what I'm going to do is it looks like I can just use this gray one here the gray one will plug in directly but this one has the wrong connector on it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this little run here and I'm going to remove this connector from this end and I'm going to use this to extend these cables here to plug in back there on the transmission see if I can get a better shot of it down there there are the two cables hanging there so they live way down there and since this won't exactly reach all the way over there that little extended run is going to come in handy so let's get to modifying alright so to modify your transmission wiring or any wiring here's some general tools that you're going to need I'll be using my heat gun here we've got some wire cutters these will come in handy I've got some butt spliced connectors these particular ones are let's see 12, 22 to 18 gauge or 18 to 22 gauge then as always I've got assorted heat shrink here that I'm going to use and yeah that's most of what you're going to need to make this happen now since this wiring is external to the car and water can come up from underneath and splash it that heat shrink is going to be very important in making this actually happen so these butt splice connectors we have here are not sealed so you're, if you don't have sealed ones, then you definitely need to make sure that you are using heat shrink because getting water in those connectors, you're just asking for problems. Alright. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut off this end because this connector does not exist on this car. So we don't care about this whatsoever. Goodbye leave ourselves plenty of extra room here and then what I'm going to do is very carefully ideally away from my body just cut a slice in this rubber coating around the outside I guess it's like wire protector or there's a name for it wait for it um, yeah wire loom I guess this isn't particularly wire loom but it's like that. So I'm just going to cut that back so that way I can strip these wires. And then here we go. I'm going to look at the 18 to 20 on the wire strippers, and I'm going to strip all of these using that. 
generally want to leave about the same length for all of them. It's not that big of a deal, but you may end up having to cut a little bit off depending. So there we go. I've got all those wires stripped. So then my choice here is I can either splice them into that end on the transmission down there, or I can splice it into this end here. And now since this is out and about and just flopping around, it's going to be really easy to work with. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to connect essentially this end to um, these four wires to these four wires. And then this end will plug directly into the back of the transmission. So it's going to be important to just do one of these at a time, especially if you didn't note down the colors. It would be very smart to just note the colors now beforehand. You wouldn't have to worry about it, but I'm just going to do one at a time to make it easy on myself. Actually, so you might want to save the connector a little bit, so just in case you mess something up or maybe in your swap is only going to be temporary, which some people do that. Um, yeah, you're going to want to cut the connector off so that you could possibly reuse it in an emergency. So I'm going to cut this back about that far, leaving about that much space. There we go. And then... Pull back the loom there. Now, I'm going to strip these wires just like I did to the other ones. Alright, so we've got the red one off, and we can see we got black and green yellow. So I find these two here there's black and green yellow. green and green white okay so the two that I'm working with are these two and then we'll just get a couple things going here the first thing you want to do is just find some um, heat shrink that actually fits over your butt connector that'll be a little bit important that one does not okay so this one just barely fits over it that's gonna be perfect for what we want so the first thing that I like to do is take the heat shrink and put it over the wire. And I normally forget to do this, so it's kind of a miracle I remembered this time. But then another handy thing to do is find your wire crimpers and find the size for 18 to 22, which is red, which is what we have. So just line the butt splice connector up right in there first. Then it'll be really easy to just put the wire in there. Once you got it in there, and squeeze as hard as you can. Maybe use both hands. There you go. And now what you want to do is pull on it quite a bit to make sure that it's not going to come off. And I can see this one is not, so that one should be good to go. Then you just find the other end that you're attaching it to here and do the same kind of thing. Hold the butt splice connector with the crimpers then feed the other end of the wire in. Ah. Now do the same thing where you, you pull on the whole thing, make sure it's not coming apart. If you're satisfied with that, then you can slide the uh, heat shrink right over top of the butt splice connector. Alright, so the heat shrink completely covers the connector and has enough space on each side that it's going to pinch the wire once I heat it up. Alright, then let's hit it with our heat gun. Now 
Now you can see it pinched both ends of the wire. That way moisture can't get in there and it's nice and solid. So we're going to go ahead and do that four more times to finish all four wires. All right, there's two done. Now make sure you don't get that heat gun too close because you don't want to actually melt the wires. That would be bad. That is one connector done. Now we can go ahead and do the other one. All right, there's all four wires connected. And now we have the correct ends on this cable. Um, we can go ahead and test them out. Um, once we're done testing them, then we can put some more wiring loom over this and just electrical tape them even more. But for now, we're gonna plug them in and just make sure that we, they work. All right, so I plugged them in. Next, let's get in the car here. <clears throat> now we can turn the key on. And we can shift the car into reverse. Let's go back here. And we can see the reverse lights are on. Hard to see in the light there, but indeed both of the reverse lights are on. Now, come back in here, put the car back in neutral. Now we can see the reverse light is indeed off. So now you can see that it's relatively easy to swap a 5MT between Subaru year models. You might have to just adjust the wiring a little bit like we just did. So, but, man, that was actually pretty easy. Easy on cars.